Good afternoon and welcome everybody. We'll be waiting one or maximum two more minutes to give all participants time to join this meeting and then we'll commence right away. So good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the next uh, BioCtane webinar in our uh, webinar series. I'm glad that I can see so many people of you joining this afternoon uh, for today's topic on how to combine fermentation and microbial electrochemistry principles to optimize the production of biohydrogen and platform molecules. Um, and I'm um, happy and honored to have Eric Trabli here on board um, for today's topic. He is the research director at INRE, the Environmental Biotechnology Laboratory in uh, Nabon, France. And um, he will um, yeah, show us not only his expertise, but also the different aspects and the context of uh, today's topic. Um, just a few words on where it is located within the bioctane process. So you might know that we're using organic waste as a feedstock, and then we'll um, be using dark fermentation. So a mixed microbial consortium um, to convert the um, waste feedstock towards uh, platform molecules. So this is more or less the context. Um, in organizational terms, um, you are invited to ask questions at any time. You can do so either by writing them in the chat or in the Q&A function. And if you feel like it's easier to explain them, you can also raise your hand and um, we'll be um, allowing or offering you the opportunity to speak at uh, the end of the presentation. Um, then it would be um, nice if you could briefly mention one or two sentences about your background, because that simply helps in um, like setting the answer um, and making it towards what you probably want to know. So having said that, without further ado, Eric, the stage is yours. Thank you, Gunnar. Thank you for this uh, very nice presentation, introduction. So good good afternoon, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> so my name is Eric Trabli. So I'm, I'm research director at uh, INRAE, and uh, I'm participating to the Bioctane project, as uh, Gunnar mentioned. And today I will uh, present how to combine fermentation and microbial electrochemistry principle to optimize the production of biohydrogen and platform molecules, uh, essentially uh, from waste. So as Guna presented, so <clears throat> in the, in the Biocten project, I changed my pointer, yeah. In the Biocten project, uh, we are converting first organic waste to carboxylic acids here and hydrogen and CO2 with the first module of dark fermentation coupled with bioelectrochemical polishing. So the subject of uh, my, my presentation today is to give you more information on the dark fermentation, what are the challenges in dark fermentation and why we couple with a bioelectrochemical uh, polishing system to optimize this conversion to hydrogen and carboxylic acid. And the remaining solid phase uh, will go to another thermochemical conversion process, hydrothermal gasification. And all these products will be further converted by uh, our colleagues from Hamburg to uh, precursors for, for jet fuels. 
So let's focus on dark fermentation, so microbial process and bioelectrochemistry. So first, I would like to present some context of the research. And so this project, Biotain, is really interdisciplinary. Uh, so we are the biological part of the project. So and this part belongs to a, a global research area uh, dealing with treatment and valorization of waste. So is what I'm going to present. And I will make some focus on biohydrogen because this is a, a, a typical uh, product that we can get from waste and also biomolecules. And in a second step, uh, I will give you more information, more details on dark fermentation and why we coupled with microbial electrolysis cells. So what are the principles, what are the challenges, challenges today? So first, the context. So for a long time, <clears throat> uh, for a long time, uh, anaerobic digestion or composting were two biological processes uh, that were used to treat waste and effluents. So mostly for a long time, anaerobic digestion in particular was used to treat waste. So we have to keep in mind that is a treatment process first. Treatment means reduction of the organic content of the waste and uh, also reduction of the pollution. And so we got treated end products. For, for the past 20 years, approximately, uh, it tends to be anaerobic digestion, a valorization process, meaning that on top of the treatment, uh, we try to produce uh, some valuable compounds, molecules like methane, a bioenergy, that can be used uh, and can, that can be converted to electricity, to heat, can be injected in, in the grid, in the natural gas grid, because methane is natural gas, and also can be used as a, a, a biofuel. And also now we produce a digestate that can be used, uh, that can be spread on agricultural uh, soil or can be composted and then uh, commercialized. So that's a two-day uh, trend. And so as a research institute, what we want is to develop uh, what we can call the anaerobic digestion uh, 2.0, so version two, which is also named environmental bio refinery. Uh, under this framework, we try to deal with uh, multiple sources of waste within a territory so we try to combine all these types of waste, urban organic waste, waste sludge, agricultural residues, agro-industrial uh, residues, and effluents, animal waste, and new biomasses, and try to treat first, but also valorize to molecules that can contribute to the bioeconomy sector. So of course, bioenergy, methane, new energy, like hydrogen, that I'm going to present, and also platform molecules. So these bio molecules or platform molecules can be produced by fermentation. And some of them can be used as uh, uh, precursors for bioplastics or in the biotain project, uh, precursors for, for jet fuel. But together with this, we produce fertilizers, which is an important uh, topic. Uh, to replace the fossil fuel uh, based fertilizers. So the digestate is rich in carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And also an increasing uh, topic is the water we use uh, in irrigation. And <clears throat> all together, we try to optimize the bioprocesses uh, to not only to optimize the conversion and the valorization of the organic matter, but also the treatment. So all of these molecules has to be under sanitary and uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, constraints. It's, so with a low impact for the environment and uh, human health. So is what we are investigating. And in the Biotain project, sorry, in the Biotain project, 
we are investigating these two products uh, first from waste and we used um, food waste as a model waste because it's rich in soluble sugars, rich uh, in uh, uh, carbohydrates that can be converted to this molecule. And also because it's a new stream uh, of, of uh, waste that could be collected and uh, valorized in Europe. So why uh, do we focus on these two uh, molecules? So first, I would like to make some, uh, to give you some basic information about hydrogen and, and why biohydrogen. So hydrogen is uh, a new energy uh, vector. So it's highly abundant uh, everywhere. It has a high energetic density. And when it's combusted, it produce low greenhouse gases emission by combustion. So it's an important vector for the energy transition. So you have probably heard a lot about uh, hydrogen, but the main limit is the low volumetric density. So it, it has to be uh, used under pressure. Uh, and the storage and transportation are energy consuming. So we have a strict regulation for production and storage. And mainly hydrogen, that's a key point, is presented in a complex form and especially in organic matter. So hydrogen production today requires extraction and conversion process. So we know a lot about electrolysis. So what I'm going to present is also we can extract hydrogen and molecules from the organic matter. So hydrogen market is a real uh, market so it's about 74 million tons per year. It's already produced, mostly from natural gas. Uh, in EU, it's about 10 million tons per year. In France, 1 million tons per year. So it's a real uh, a big market already. But as you can see here, it's mostly used as um, a chemical reactant in the refinery, so for, for gasoline. Uh, to produce ammonia, so it's a key, uh, a key molecules to produce ammonia as a fertilizer. So 30% of hydrogen goes to is converted to ammonia, but also for solvent uh, in different in different way. So methanol, a big a big solvent, but other chemicals. And if you look at transportation, it's only few uh, percent that is dedicated to transportation, and so. What is expected is in the future, and if you look at uh, the transportation now, it, it's becoming a reality. So just a few examples uh, here in France is you have some high taxi in Paris. So it's about uh, a float of uh, around 600, 700 vehicles fed with hydrogen. So it's uh, some good cars with uh, low greenhouse gases emission. Uh, also, some trains are uh, operated with hydrogen, where there is no electricity. And by 2035, Airbus is uh, uh, planning to develop new planes uh, uh, running, operated with uh, hydrogen. So it's becoming a reality. And it's expected to increase by a factor of 10 from 2020 to 2050, the quantity of hydrogen that will be used in the transportation sector. So here you have an example. So I would uh, um, recommend this, uh, this uh, report made by the Hydrogen Council in 2017, but where they projected the hydrogen demand by 2050. And if you look at the, the, the values, here, it's about 10 times the energy demand will be will increase in, energy, in hydrogen by 2050. And it's not only transportation here in blue, but it's also for power generation, buffering, and decarbonation of the industry. So in industrial energy, building up, and power. So we will need green hydrogen. And for that, I, we think that bioprocesses can contribute uh, to this, uh, to this uh, new uh, decarbonation domain. 
Indeed, hydrogen is produced mostly uh, by natural gas, oil, and coal uh, reforming. So if you look at the distribution of uh, hydrogen, how it's produced, only 10% of hydrogen is produced by electrolysis now, and mostly is a conversion of uh, fossil fuels at 90%. So as a research institute, we try to develop new area and new green area. Uh, so if you look at the colors of hydrogen, uh, just briefly, green hydrogen, uh, it, when, it become, when it comes from uh, renewable sources, like wind sources, solar, and biomass also, and you have a different types of hydrogen, I, I would just would like to, to show you that blue hydrogen it's not hydrogen coming from electrolysis. It's just natural gas reforming and carbon capture is what we call blue hydrogen. But most of the hydrogen is gray, brown, and black with a high uh, carbon footprint uh, and high greenhouse gases uh, footprint. Uh, so highly detrimental to the environment. So from waste, what, what can we do? So there is a very interesting uh, paper published in 2015 where they compared uh, the life cycle analysis of the different technologies to produce uh, hydrogen. And if you look at these two uh, parameters, so one is a global warming potential in uh, blue and the acidification potential in red. And if you look at also, if we look at the, the technologies, uh, this one is electrolysis. So th there is some, depending on the source of uh, electrons, there is, that can be a, an impact here on the global warming. The thermochemical processes, the natural gas reforming is the highest impact. And just to show that biological processes have the lowest impact because it's a natural process and it doesn't require a lot of energy. This is true for biohydrogen, but it's also true uh, for biomolecules. So life cycle analysis of these molecules compared to, to other processes is low. At the same time, uh, the productivities of bioprocesses is lower than, than chemical uh, processes. So, uh, and we, we have to, uh, we have uh, specific challenges for, for biological processes. So is, what I would like to, to show you uh, now is what are the main principles, but also the challenges of the biological processes uh, for each step, the dark fermentation and the emission. So a uh, few years ago, in 2016, we made a literature survey and, a review of all the literature dealing with anaerobic uh, processes in mixed culture, especially in fermentation. So it was about uh, 2,600 articles. And then we focus only on methane, pure culture. Uh, we removed, sorry, uh, the methane uh, with only methane, so anaerobic digestion uh, uh, articles. Pure culture also, because we wanted to focus on waste. So uh, a mixture of microbial uh, communities. And we removed the review articles. So we focus on 860 technical articles. So here you have the, the, the final paper. And what is interesting is if you look at the technologies, uh, mostly we have dark fermentation that can be coupled with anaerobic digestion. I will, I will uh, present. Why? Uh, microbial electrolysis cell is a, a second um, technology. Dark fermentation can be coupled with micro electrolysis cells also. Photo fermentation, that can be coupled with dark fermentation and also others, mostly uh, some algae or uh, dark fermentation coupled with uh, other algae um, uh, technologies. And so the articles mostly are dedicated to dark fermentation and dark fermentation coupled to anaerobic digestion. MEC in blue here, and little bit of photo fermentation, photo bioprocesses. 
And now, uh, if we look at the patterns, the dynamics are a bit different because we have dark fermentation, the coupling, but more MEC and dark fermentation and MEC uh, coupling. And uh, what is what I'm going to present is this kind of coupling is uh, uh, a key aspect to valorize the waste and the organic matter. And it's also what we, what we are addressing in the biotin project, how to improve the carbon efficiency of this uh, system. So first, the dark fermentation, which is which represents about 75% of the publication. What it consists in is we put the organic waste and the effluent into a closed systems and the microbial communities here are degrading the organic matter into hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and organic acids. Some alcohols, uh, of course, bio, microbial biomass is produced so the, the, the microbes are reproducing. And some organic matter can be undegraded because it's not biodegradable. So if we look at the anaerobic digestion process, which is the final product, the methane here, from the carbohydrates, we have the first step of hydrolysis, microbial hydrolysis. Then with the sugars, complex sugars, we have a fermentation step here acidogenesis, and these sugar are converted to acetate metabolites, so some carboxylic acids, ethanol, and hydrogen. Among the metabolites, what we call metabolites, VFA, uh, we have propionic acid, and we are interested in this specific molecule in biotechnology project. And then all these compounds by or acetogenesis are converted to acetate or hydrogen, and then methanogens can convert acetate and hydrogen to methane. So we try to stop this reaction and only focus on hydrogen and molecules uh, production. So in natural ecosystem and anaerobic digestions, so in nature, hydrogen is produced and the molecules, but they are immediately consumed by methanogens or, or other uh, microbes. So one of the challenge is really to stop the sides reaction and this reaction that are consuming the, the, the product. So in dark fermentation, we have few operating conditions that can be controlled. The hydrogen retention time, the pH, the temperature, and the microbial community. So just as a matter, an example, if we take the same degradation uh, scheme, here, the main mi microbes that are producing hydrogen and, and, and other molecules, this one, acetate and butyrate are cross region species, and they, are, they have metabolic limitation. On top of that, with waste, we have ecological limitations, meaning that one of the challenge is to deal with different types of microorganisms. They can produce a lot of different uh, molecules. And if you look at propionate, for instance, there are few uh, bacteria that enter into competition to degrade uh, carbohydrates. So one of our challenge really in biotech project is to convert these carbohydrates towards uh, propionate mostly and try to avoid the side uh, reaction. Uh, yeah, I will, I will just keep this. And in def, dark fermentation, what is interesting is uh, finally, if in the literature, we look at the different substrate and some substrate like simple sugars, industrial effluent, agricultural residues uh, can have uh, interesting uh, hydrogen yield and also molecule yield. And one of the key aspects is we check the operating condition in all papers. And finally, what we found is hydrogen yield, but it's also the biomolecule yield, were quite similar, finally. 
So if you look at here, the distribution, so of course we have some outliers here, but the distribution, whatever the condition, mesophilic, thermophilic, the volume of the reactor, or if it's operated in batch, fed batch, continuous, semi-continuous condition, we found almost an average value of conversion into this product. That means that under certain condition, whatever the temperature, working volume, or mode of operation is quite a robust process. So we just have to find the good microbial communities and the good condition. And finally, uh, uh, the technology will be robust to convert the waste to, to what we expect in terms of molecules. So the main advantage of dark, dark fermentation is a high organic load is a well-proved technology. So it's already used huh, to produce, uh, uh, to, to, sorry, to treat waste and wastewater. But the main limits are the metabolic limitations. So the maximum theoretical yield for hydrogen is 33%. And the average yield in literature found is about 11%. And the remaining, are the molecules. So that's why it's interesting in a biotain project is because we will use the hydrogen, but also the other molecule like propionic acid. Indeed, if we look at in the literature, the hydrogen yield and the concentration in organic matter, when we increase the concentration, the hydrogen yield decreases. So they are a, a world uh, uh, unvalorized organic matter here in the form of, of hydrogen and it's mostly recovered in form of uh, biomolecules. So what are the biomolecules? In literature, we found that, of course, acetate and butyrate, because they are linked to the hydrogen uh, production, ethanol and propionic acid. So it is one of the top molecules often found in mixture with the others. So in bioctane, the most difficult will be to have this molecule very specifically uh, produced uh, compared to the others. So also lactate, valerate, and so on, a lot of different molecules, but often found in mixture. And we did also a, a market study on these uh, different molecules and the propionic acid, again, is a quite interesting uh, uh, molecules for uh, the green chemistry. Uh, so it's also a secondary uh, outcomes of the project that can be used as a, 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 a chemical for the green chemistry. So indeed, as most of the organic matter, is found in molecules, so we can extract, but uh, we can also valorize the molecule. And there are two, two uh, types of valorization. One is to couple dark fermentation here, we recover hydrogen, and the molecules are converted to methane in the second step in anaerobic digestion. But we can also couple dark fermentation with what we call bioelectrochemical system or microbial electrolysis cells to produce hydrogen and also to degrade or to convert the, the molecules to, uh, to, to hydrogen is what I'm going to present. So first, uh, the coupling between dark fermentation and anaerobic digestion is 10% of the articles produced. And just, I just would like to present uh, some results we got in the national uh, program uh, we coordinated about biohydrogen production from waste. So toward the implementation of additional fermentation step into AD treatment stream. So the idea here was to, to study the impact of this fermentation process into the existing uh, AD process to produce uh, hydrogen, but also molecules here. And as a, uh, a rough example at pilot scale, what we found is uh, the condition where here uh, food waste, so I'm sorry it's in French, but food waste and manure and fermented food waste and manure. 
So after fermentation, and here only along uh, anaerobic digestion process. So here are the organic protein weight. So of course, in the two-step process, we had hydrogen first and then methane. In a one-step process, only methane. And if we combine the two-step process, the energetic yield increased by about 40%. It's explained mostly by air. If we look at the, the error, uh, the methane content per gram of uh, substrate is very similar. So the two-step process, we are uh, used to say that hydrogen is a, a bonus when we operate a two-step process, because in the first stage, we uh, degrade uh, the organic matter. Uh, so it's very facilitate, facilitated here to produce methane. So the methane yield uh, was almost similar in all cases, an increase of 40%, about 40% the energetic yield. So that's a really a key aspect of the coupling. And also in dark fermentation, if we, if we add this uh, step into AD, uh, we look at the LCA, uh, again, I'm sorry, the, the, the description is in French here, but the LCA is very favorable. So the scenarios of the project here, we produce hydrogen at below two kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen. At European level, uh, hydrogen below three, about three kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen is uh, considered as a green hydrogen. So here, with a mix of electricity in France or photovoltaic uh, solar panel in France is below three kilograms. Here is the reforming of the natural gas is about 10 kilos of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen. And the mixture, uh, if we consider the, the mix, uh, electrical mix in Europe, it can go up to 20 kilograms uh, CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen, even if, if it's by electrolysis. So, uh, so it's just to show that the green hydrogen can be produced with this kind of uh, uh, technology. And the most impacting actually is not the technology itself, it's the aperation mode. Here, here was a PSA uh, system. And the impact also on eating on site uh, so here we use the biomethane. <clears throat> the second uh, technology is the microbial electrolysis cells. So it consists here on the conversion of organic acids. So propionic acids, butyric acid or acetic acids, alcohols into electrons and carbon dioxide. So we use the capacity of uh, microbes, electroactive microbes, they degrade the organic matter here, and they give electrons to a circuit. So it's really in between electrochemistry and biology, microbiology. And so these microbes are providing the electrons, and by applying here uh, a difference of potential, a current, uh, the current is generated, and the protons are converted to pure hydrogen here in the cathodic uh, compartment. So what is interesting here is two, two things, is we can uh, treat and valorize the organic acids coming from the dark fermentation. And also we produce a pure hydrogen here in the second compartment. So for that, we use uh, different types of microorganisms, uh, electroactive microorganisms that can transfer their electrons to the anodic electrode here, the anode, through a mediators in, in, in the bulk or by direct contact with the anode. So through a, here a cytochrome or with a PD. So what is uh, interesting, there is uh, different types of electroactive bacteria and is something we, we will uh, focus on in the biotech project. And so why do we use bioelectrochemical system and not uh, electrochemistry? If we look at here uh, the cell voltage, theoretically, to go from 
uh, water in electrolysis to hydrogen, the difference of potential is between 0.2 and minus 0.4 for hydrogen. And but if we at the end we come from acetate, the difference of potential it's only between minus 0.28 and minus 0.4. So minus 0.3 and minus 0.4 for hydrogen. That means that in this microbial electrolysis cell, the most of the energy comes from this short carboxylic acid. And the difference of potential, it's only uh, theoretically of 0.135. And in the electrolyzer is 1.2. So it's 10 times less than in the electrolyzer. Uh, actually, eight times less. And we often uh, put a potential of minus 0.2 to the anode. So this technology is quite interesting because we have a high hydrogen pollution yield, high energetical conversion yield, and is and the hydrogen here is highly purified in theory. So it's adapted to wastewater or effluent coming from the fermentation. It has a high material cost and the low organic load. So in previous study, uh, we did this coupling. So you have here a reference. Uh, we did some coupling. So we used six different wastewater and industrial byproducts, real wastewater, and we tested the feasibility of hydrogen production in a two-step labscape process. So in the first step was a dark ferment, uh, traditional dark fermentation process. And in the second step, we use the microbial electrolysis cell. So uh, I'm going uh, through this two-step process. So the dark fermentation, here you can see some yields. So it's very variable according to the type of substrate. So one was uh, cheese whey, wastewater from industrial fruit juice, this one, uh, fruit processing wastewater, uh, paper mill wastewater, sugar production uh, wastewater, indigenous uh, residues also. What is interesting is in the second step, so we use the effluent here. In the second step, uh, we recovered uh, a lot of hydrogen. And if we consider the energy we put into the system, we recovered up to 700% of the energy put into the system, uh, into hydrogen. And the treatment, because it's, uh, we, we have to keep in mind that is a treatment process. The treatment was efficient between 60 to 70% here, uh, COD removal. So as a summary in this study, we found that uh, in terms of yield, the maximum theory, the maximum, uh, the theory is about 12 moles of hydrogen per mole of glucose. And we reach around, uh, around 10, a bit less, mole of hydrogen per mole of glucose equivalent with this wastewater. So it's about uh, also 70% of COD removal. So it was quite efficient. We were quite surprised to produce hydrogen. So it's a high hydrogen production in any season in dark fermentation alone. So it's about six to 15 times more hydrogen in any season in dark fermentation in the coupling system. So how we can apply this knowledge to the Biopten project. So how we plan to do what we are doing is here, uh, doing a dark fermentation process so here we will simplify the system, the organic waste into metabolic products. So as I showed is a mixture of acetate, butyrate, a bit of hydrogen and propionic acid. And what is interesting is in the MEC, the electroactive bacteria are not degrading the propionic acid. It's quite difficult to degrade this acid. So they are degrading and we will uh, uh, shape the microbial community to degrade only acetate and butyric acid. So we will valorize most of the organic matter going through this two-step process into propionic acid. 
So the effluent will be enriched in propionic acid and into hydrogen that can be used in the second step. Uh, so the, 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 the um, experiments are, are, are ongoing. So in conclusion uh, of my talk today is environmental biorefinery. So is uh, anaerobic digestion uh, version two. Uh, we think that will be dedicated to new high value molecules, especially biohydrogen and bio-based molecules that will be produced from different categories of waste. Uh, in bioplane, we focus on uh, mostly uh, bio-waste and food waste. And we couple dark fermentation and, oh, not added, sorry, uh, microbial electrolysis. And we think it's a promising way to produce uh, biohydrogen at high yield, but also to enrich the effluent in propionic acid. So it's what we call polishing uh, system to polish the effluent and uh, increase the selectivity uh, of propionic acid. And uh, there is still a large field of investigation in this system in uh, bioetrochemistry coupled with fermentation. And because it has a great potential to overcome some thermodynamic uh, limitations that the microorganisms can, cannot do it. So I hope my presentation was clear enough. Uh, if you have any question, I, I would be pleased to, to, to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, that was really insightful. And as for the other webinars, again, at least for myself, a new look into some, <laughs> for me, very wide maps. Um, so, so a lot of new insights for myself here. Um, as mentioned, if you have any questions, you can either write them in the chat or in the Q&A function, or just raise your hand and um, elaborate a bit more in detail. In the meantime, I would uh, mention one more organizational aspect because we can provide you a uh, certificate of participation if you want to um, <laughs> receive such a certificate. Um, just send us an email to info at bioctane.eu. I will also post the email address in the chat in uh, just a minute. And um, as I said, uh, there were a lot of new things for me here, Eric. So um, I have some questions as well. Um, you mentioned that in some fields or for some experiments, you applied, I think, dark fermentation or even the combination with the microbial electrolysis cell already. So at which scale are those applications currently and to which scale do you imagine um, they could develop? Oh, you're on mute. My micro. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gona, yeah, for this question. Um, our experiment were uh, lab scale experiments. Uh, there is a big challenge in upscaling these uh, processes because most of the our colleagues uh, who did it um, were facing uh, methanogenesis at high scale. So I would say some groups are upscaling this uh, technology. So I know some of them in Barcelona, especially. Um, but it's quite difficult because rapidly you can have methanogens in this system. Uh, there are some examples of pilot plants or mm -hmm. demo system. Uh, meanwhile, is still we have to keep in mind is a treatment process first. So to answer your question is really a hot topic now is how to upscale this kind of process, definitely. Okay, so, so, so it's still an open question, like how far will yes. we be able to scale it and when? Yeah. Yeah, very uh, interesting. When, when, when is difficult to answer, but how far? Uh, some groups are investigating to this uh, aspect. When is more difficult because if we want to produce hydrogen uh, economically now, we bioprocesses are uh, competing with electrolyzers. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, uh, 
it can be a bit difficult uh, to outcompete the electrolyzers. So just as a matter of example, is uh, the target is five euros per kilogram of hydrogen after production, the, the cost of the production uh, for natural reforming, natural gas reforming, they can reach about 1.5 euros per kilogram. Uh, and for electrolyzers, it, it, depending on the size, can be a bit below five to to ten. See, so or, 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 or higher. Yeah. And if we focus on biological processes, they are not very productive. So for fermentation, is is can be can reach about five, but for the quantity is not a lot. Mm -hmm. And for bioelectrochemical system, it can be around the same as electrolyzers. So the benefit see. is really, or higher price, the benefit is really uh, the treatment system. Ah, oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, that, that was another question I had, like a cost comparison um, for different hydrogen provision pathways. As we probably all know, that hydrogen has been quite a hot topic in the recent years. So if I get you right, it could be in the same cost range of electrolysis, for example, most likely not in the range of fossil-based processes. And still, I assume that a lot of development will take on for biogenic hydrogen. So, so there's probably a large variety also on cost estimates so far. Yeah, exactly. The cost estimates uh, are based often on pilot, pilot scale. Or, so you know that uh, we are making a lot of, uh, it's difficult to estimate at full scale what mm -hmm. could happen. Mm -hmm. And also because the technology is not uh, implemented at full scale. Yeah. So... In our estimate, depending on the scenarios, is very sensitive to scenarios, type of waste, uh, hydrogen yield, uh, the conversion yield, uh, the type of pretreatment and so on. Uh, so it's very sensitive to the scenario, the, mm -hmm. where it will be implanted. Uh, it can be competitive, a bit more than five euros per kilogram. Uh, but can reach also very high price. See, up to uh, so I've seen in some literature up to fifty euros per mm. kilogram. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm very careful with this uh, assumption, as you imagine. Uh, but um, it's a challenge for 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 the future. We have yeah. to, but we have to keep in mind is a treatment process really. So it's a services to, to the society first. Mm -hmm. And if we can benefit from these services or if we can lower the cost of the treatment is also part of, the, of our uh, uh, development. Yeah. yeah, You mean in a sense, it's a two-folded advantage. On the one hand, we have a waste treatment and on the other hand, we get valuable products from that treatment. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. The main disadvantage of biological processes uh, is the productivity, the efficiency of the system. Mm -hmm. Of course, microbes or nature, uh, uh, we are quite the, the microbes are quite slow compared to chemical uh, uh, reaction. I see. Yeah. Um, beyond waste slash wastewater treatment, are there other applications where you could imagine that uh, biohydrogen production would make sense? <laughs> good. I mean, we're kind of losing one of the two advantages then, right? Yes, exactly. Good, good question. Uh, I wouldn't, as I, I, as I presented, uh, only a tiny part of the organic matter is converted to hydrogen, 30% maximum. The others mm -hmm. are molecules. Uh, so if you look at highly degradable substrate, it will be mostly converted to molecules. So we have to first to focus on these molecules. And this mm -hmm. is what we are doing in bioctane. That's very interesting because we are focusing on molecules that will be further converted to jet fuels. So it's highly valuable. We treat and we valorize. 
if we focus only on biohydrogen, uh, only 30% of the capacity of the potential of the waste or effluent or carbohydrates or any type of organic matter will be valorized. Mm -hmm. So for me, it has no sense to say, except if we, if we couple with MEC or other system, but only fermentation, it has no sense to say we focus only on biohydrogen. That's coupled and, 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 and uh, uh, increase or, or optimize the potential of the organic matter. Mm -hmm. You mean since, since there's such a broad spectrum of products and I remember one or two slides where, where it's been shown, it makes the most sense where you can use at least several, ideally most of those products and not only the hydrogen. Yes. Yeah. And I assume then, then also the valorization of the entire process turns into something else because some of those products might be, um, let's say, more um, rare or more specific than hydrogen. Yes, the, the mm. most the most difficult part here is uh, purification. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a gas, like hydrogen, it's quite simple to purify the gas. Uh, methane, hydrogen is not technically so difficult. When it's in the liquid phase, you have a mixture of VFA, of uh, carboxylic acid, at low concentration. Uh, that's the key point. How, how can we extract and purify these uh, molecules? Because in the green chemistry uh, area, domain, they want pure molecules as precursors. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a key point. That's why also the polishing uh, effect of the MEC would be interesting to be investigated. Mm -hmm. Because even if it's a low concentration, the selectivity is high, uh, it's always easier to then to, to extract or purify this uh, molecule. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. That supports more or less in extracting the molecules that you want. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have one more very specific question that you might have answered on one of the slides. So at some point you mentioned the, at least the way I got it, uh, the energy efficiency of dark fermentation um, it showed three plus, which meant advantages to me. Um, can you compare that, for example, to electrolysis? Uh, what do you mean? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, do, yeah, yeah. So, so if the the energy efficiency of dark fermentation is rather high, I was wondering, like, where does it range in compared to, for example, hydrogen production from uh, electrolysis or any other, um, let's say, chemical-based and not biogenic process? Uh, is actually um, for hydrogen, uh, it's, it's not comparable because for electrolysis or other uh, system, you provide energy. You have to mm. provide energy to mm -hmm. extract the hydrogen. Mm. For biological processes, uh, the amount of energy is just uh, mixing and pumping because the microbes so, are able to extract themselves the energy. Even, mm -hmm. even mixing is not necessary. So this is not uh, uh, fully comparable uh, because the amount of energy you have to put into the system is very low compared um, to, to the other. Yeah. But, but what I, I, we saw uh, is when you couple in the anaerobic digestion process, you just implement this hydrogen step. Uh, and the two-step process is more efficient than the one-step process. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the hydrogen is often is what we, we get at lab scale or pilot scale. So hydrogen is a bonus compared to, to AD. It's on top of that. Yeah. Ah, yeah, OK. Interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah. And what I assume is also another, let's say, second aspect is um, that in electrolysis, you mainly get one product, hydrogen. And with dark fermentation, you get a range of products. So how do you allocate the energy that you spend towards those products? Um, if that makes sense. Uh, yes. So 
in in that when we couple uh, the first um, system the dark fermentation doesn't require a lot of energy uh, is not the main the main uh, and energy consumption what uh, what i presented if we only focus on hydrogen the most uh, energy consuming uh, uh, equipment is uh, purification from co2 and what is beneficial is uh, we haven't compared but it would be very interesting to compare in mec or the coupling as we have pure hydrogen uh, to compare the energy consumed to purify hydrogen in dark fermentation that that is already purified in uh, mec mm -hmm. I, I, so we put a, a bit of energy but maybe is much more less than the purification system we haven't um, compared so far but i see yeah. a good uh, good uh, good question yeah. Ah, okay. So yeah, so probably yeah. the the main or the large energy consumers are other process steps. So uh, will most likely also be interesting uh, to have a closer look then at the results of our work package four, who are doing the overall process evaluation, um, not only in terms of technological parameters, but since we also mentioned cost, um, I could imagine there uh, will be also some interesting figures at some point throughout this project. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, unless there are any further questions, I think we more or less reached the end of our webinar. Um, as mentioned, if you send an, a short email to info at bioctane.eu, now also written in the chat, um, we can send you a certificate of particip participation um, straight into your mailbox. And um, apart from that, Thank you very much for sharing this insightful hour with us. Um, to let you know, the next Bioctane webinar will take place on 6th of June, so another Thursday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And um, the topic then will be focusing not so much on the biogenics, but rather on the thermocatalytical routes, so the use of catalysts to convert the platform molecules that we mentioned. So for example, acetoin and 2,3-butanediol towards jet fuel. So now we had several webinars looking at the provision of those platform molecules. And then finally, we'll also turn them into jet fuels on June 6th. Um, you'll receive a registration link and everything else um, either via our social media channels or if you have subscribed to our newsletter, you'll also receive an email there. Having said that, thank you very much. Thank you, Eric, for this insightful presentation and have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.